Happy Sunday, everybody. Welcome back. If you're joining me for the first time, my name's Anthony. I'm not a professional chef. I just like to cook and I like to have fun and experiment, try new things in the kitchen. So if you're joining me for the first time, let me catch you up. I am cooking through the series The Sopranos and that means I am doing every dish inspired by the show, mentioned in the show, or in one of the two authorized cookbooks, either Entertaining with the Sopranos or the Soprano Family Cookbook. Today's recipe is both in the show and on page 185 of the Soprano Family Cookbook. And today we are watching Season 1, Episode 8, Legend of Tennessee, Maltesante. All the rest of the crew is freaked out about the FBI indictments and Christopher is just trying to get famous, become a writer, and he's getting really frustrated being the low guy on the totem pole. And Tony sends him out to a bakery to pick up some Choyadel, which was my first episode, link in the description, and some other random pastries, cannoli being one of them. Twenty nine. There you go, big guy. Now, cannoli is a couple day process, apparently. Well, it can be a couple day process. So, tonight, it's super hot in this kitchen. I had a long day. I'm just going to do the first starting step. So, take a strainer. Technically, this is a colander, but I'm using it anyways. Uh, some cheesecloth, line the bottom, all right? Like so. Put it over a bowl. Take two pounds of ricotta and plop it in. All the moisture at the end, yeah, don't bother with that. You can throw that away. <laughs> it looks like a jello mold. It's all jiggly. Let me take a knife and squish this down a bit. So ricotta has quite a bit of liquid in it and we're gonna try to reduce that. So this is going to sit overnight in the fridge and it's going to strain through this cheesecloth. Then take some plastic wrap, put that on top of the ricotta. Take a plate that fits whatever it is that you're using. Take a can of something. I'm using this can of enchilada sauce to kind of weigh it down. And that is going to basically Press the liquid, leave this for a few hours or overnight. I'm choosing overnight because I am done for the day. It is late and I'll come pick this back up tomorrow. So tomorrow we're gonna go through the long process of making the dough and then turning this into actually filling and frying and all that jazz. So for now, I'm gonna throw this in the fridge, have the rest of this wine. Oh, and that's it, man. I'm wearing my Godfather inspired shirt. Leave the gun. Take the cannoli. Now I already got started with the ricotta filling last night. And so now that's been dripping and draining and now let's start work on the shells. So for the shells, supposedly this recipe out of the book makes 16 cannolis. We'll see. For the shells, the ingredients we have are flour, sugar, cocoa powder, cinnamon, salt, oil, and some dry white wine. We're gonna go ahead and put all the dries into a mixing bowl. Got my KitchenAid over here. By the way, I'm gonna go ahead and put my Venmo in the uh, description below, so if you wanted to contribute to me getting my own KitchenAid. Has that been open the whole time? My kitchen's pretty much done, but I'm house sitting for my parents this week, so I thought, ah, you know what? I love their kitchen so much more, so I'm just gonna keep using it. So anyways, I still haven't gotten my own KitchenAid. So if you want to contribute to that one, I'll gladly accept it. Anyways, we're going to start by throwing in all the dries into the bowl. And start slowly mixing them together. I'm going to need some space for kneading. Now we slowly pour in the oil and the wine. Now the wine, we just put enough in to make the dough soft. So this is like super crumbly and it's not attaching to itself. So I'm gonna put in a splash more wine. So I guess this looks right. Do clean the area that you're going to uh, be kneading on. This dough is super crumbly like. It doesn't look like it should work. I'm gonna be honest with you. 
trying to get it all kind of clustered together while it's still in the bowl. You're supposed to knead it for like two-ish minutes or so. But you know, this is like my 50, 52nd video and I'm always doubting Michelle, the author of the cookbook, and she almost always turns up right in the end, so I'm just gonna go with this. There was the marinara sauce incident though. She was definitely wrong about that. I got a bad wrist because I played football in high school and some jerk hit me after the whistle. And now saran wrap the ball low dough and we let it cool at room temperature. This guy's just gonna sit here for a half hour now while I clean this up. It's rested for 30 minutes. Now we cut the dough into four pieces, run one of the pieces of dough through the rollers of a pasta machine, lightly dust the dough with flour as needed to keep the pieces from sticking. Flour is your friend on a pasta maker. Continue to pass the dough through the machine until you reach the last or second to last setting. The dough strips should be about four inches wide, thin enough to see your hand through. That's ridiculous, but let's give it a shot. I'll measure the length of your cannoli tubes. Where are my tubes coming? Where are my tubes? Up here there. So I got these on Amazon. I'm gonna go ahead and put a link in the description to the ones that I ordered. I have 15 of these, and the book says that these will make 16, so I gotta reuse one of them. Also, be careful when you're handling these because this is very thin metal, and I'm I know my luck, I'm gonna totally slice my finger on one of these. All right, so I'm gonna cut this into four and I'm gonna roll it through the, gonna roll it through the pasta machine. I'm gonna fast forward this. Y'all don't need to see me struggle with this. It's a bajillion degrees in here. I need the fan on, so we're just gonna fast forward. We'll just, I'll show you how the, how the strips end up. Uh, thankfully I had some help rolling all this out. I might get more than 16 out of these. Also, Hashtag, today I learned. So this, <laughs> this pasta roller comes with this little clamp so you can keep it onto whatever it is. So you can... I've always been putting it right here, like a big dummy McDum dum Apparently, there's this little hole on, on the side and that's where the clamp's supposed to go into. Let me tell you, it made life way easier. The book says to go ahead and cut it like in squares. Experiment a little, I did one of those and it didn't look right. For this size cannoli tube, the lid of a one quart mason jar seems to be about the right size. I might try to find something a little bit bigger than this. So I'm gonna go ahead and cookie cutter all these out and start frying. This recipe also calls for egg white. I think you can probably see my sweat line. I told you it's a bajillion degrees in this kitchen right now. California's in a heat wave. I don't do heat well, I prefer cold. Cause you know, you can always put on more layers in the cold. There's only so many layers you could take off before the cops are called for indecent exposure. So we need some egg whites. I'm gonna take these yolks out of here. So the recipe said this was gonna make 16 cannolis. I ended up with like 30 something, which I guess gives me enough to spare in case I mess some up. I got the cannoli tube and it says to oil them up. I'm gonna try using non-stick spray and see how this turns out for me. So I'm gonna take it, lay it down, roll the dough onto itself, not too tightly. Take some egg white. I don't really think I need this basket, but I have it. So I'm gonna use it, why not, right? Please keep in mind, in case of a fire, do not, do not put water on it. Take it off the heat, cover it with a towel or flour even, but not, do not put water on an oil fire. So we want that to get up to 350 degrees. Make sure you get a thermometer that will, can handle uh, a fryer. And in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and get the other 15 of these ready to go. Also, I didn't end up using the uh, cork lid. I ended up using this uh, bullet, I think it's a bullet sh um, blender lid. That turned out to be the right size for these cannolis. I have a pan here with paper towel because when they come out, I'm going to use tongs and I'm going to set them up like this so that the oil drains out of them. Make sure you don't get egg wash on the cannoli tube, by the way. I didn't mention that in the book. This process has taken quite a while. I've got one round done. Just going to load up like three of them first. See how those go.
So they should be in for about two minutes or until golden brown. Oh, these are brown, brown, like burnt. Okay, it's a good thing I got extras. Those burn. Second round, much better. It made like a little taco. I'll try that one. A couple of these look okay. The book actually says to heat to 375. I think that's way too hot considering how quick these things are cooking. So I'm gonna, again, do three at a time. I'm basically just gonna drop them and pull them back out because they continue to cook a little while after you pull them out. So we'll see how this goes for me. I'm trying to handle one that's still way too hot to be handled. So there are three places in town that I go to for cannoli. Papa Napoli's Italian Deli, which is conveniently right next to my barber. And then Cugini's, which is across the street from Papa Napoli. When I have the money, I go to Gina's Piece of Cake. So if you're on the Central Coast, those are my cannoli go-tos. Do not come to me. I'm not doing this again. Maybe if you ask really nice. I'm gonna take a water break, sit underneath the fan, and then I'll work on the filling. This process sucks. <laughs> okay, I've cooled down a little and cleaned a little bit. This has gotta be like the messiest, most time-consuming recipe I've done. I mean, Sunday gravy took like four hours, but it simmered. Easter pie, that one took a couple days. Most of that was the crust resting. This has taken so much energy. So, okay, the ricotta that we let drain, I should have shown you how much liquid came out of this. It was a pretty impressive amount. So we're gonna put in the food processor. Hopefully you already cleaned it. We're gonna start blending this. I totally didn't even go over the list of ingredients for the filling. It's the, the two pounds of ricotta, a cup and a half of confectioners or powdered sugar, it's the same thing. Uh, vanilla, cinnamon, book says an ounce of mini chocolate chips, semi-sweet. I'm going with a little bit more because why not? The book also suggests candied oranges and I am so sick of the candied orange peel. Like Michelle recommends it any chance she gets. And you know what? I'm done. I'm over it. I'm sick of it. All right. The ricotta's been in here for a while, so now I'm going to turn this back on and I'm going to start adding in all the other ingredients. And I'm just going to blend them all until it's smooth. And I'd say that looks good. Now we take a piping bag or a Ziploc bag. I'll lick that bowl clean later. Now, if you want, you can make this a day in advance. Ugh, get this out of the way. Get the cannolis here. Makeshift piping bag and cut the tip off of one side. If you have a big hand, this works out pretty well. If you don't, good luck. May the odds be ever in your favor. I'm gonna try one of the burnt ones first. So fill in one side. Then switch to the other. Aha, like so. It's like almost 10 o'clock and it's still 71 degrees outside. That's unnatural for the Central Coast. There's one plate full. I'm using paper plates because I don't want to crowd them. All right, <sighs> that's it. So here we have the rejects that were my earlier attempts that ended up kind of burnt. And here are the 20 that made it. I think these two plates look prettier than a lot of these. These are some of the earlier attempts also. Perfect timing, Chris. The, the Kramer to my Seinfeld just showed up. Yeah, you're not that funny. Ouch. Seinfeld level that that works. <laughs> now to make them pretty. What actually is the wrapping? Is it a noodle? It's a uh, no, it's a pastry. Here's a reject one. Try solo. Slightly burnt. Now, if you want to be extra and put some more chocolate chips on the ends, it's like a puff pastry with one layer. Yeah. Yeah, sort of. It, uh, it's fried. It's fried dough. Hence the smell in here. Now we pick and choose the prettiest ones for a photo shoot. Pour a 
pour a couple of them right here and then dip them. That'll give them that cool, that's what you're going for. Huh? That's exactly what I was going for. Easy way to get the fancy chocolate chip at the end look. Mm. Pour a whole bunch and then just dip it in. There we go. Cheers. Clink, clink. Oh. Is it good? Oh, yeah. This is uh, ruining my diabetes diet, but it's totally delicious. A crap ton of work. I'm only going to do this ever again on a really, really special occasion. I learned my lesson. Don't let them fry too long or else they end up darker than me. Yeah. You want them about my color. Remember, the, the oil's still going to cook afterwards, so pull them out before they're fully done. This was fun. Oh, yeah. I don't remember what's going to be next week. But if you like and subscribe, you'll find out and get a notification what my next video is. I'm really tired. I don't, oh, I think I have it written down over here. Oh, Neapolitan loaves. So that's gonna be a lot easier than this. I'm gonna wait till the heat wave dies down. Hey everyone, me again. About this, I, I had a bartending gig today and the bride wanted everybody to wear pink. So here we go. This is what I look like in pink. Real men wear pink. Anyways, I just want to follow up because the last instruction in the cannoli recipe says serve within an hour. And being the cocky, Icarus-like person that I am, I figured, ah, they should be good tomorrow. So I took them to work the next day and I shared it with my coworkers and the taste was all right. Like the taste was still there, but the shell went totally soggy. So when the book says serve within an hour, it really means serve within an hour. So don't try to pregame these too far in advance and expect the shell to maintain its instructional integrity because it won't. I just felt the need to warn you before I let you try this recipe on your own. And then also one more thing just so I can avoid it in the comments. Cannoli is plural. Singular form is cannolo. So there you go. I can say I said it. Reach out to me on social medias that are scrolling below. Hope you have a really great week. Next week we're doing Neapolitan Loaves. And until then, manja.